All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. We are live in full effect with the one, the only, the West Coast living legend. We got Big Sonos right here live on the line. Hey, what's up, Roberto? What's up, Outlaw Radio? Man, I appreciate y'all, man. And just to let you know, I'm proud of what y'all doing. Y'all be grabbing legends that I... I can't imagine how you get them, how you get them, like you said. So, shout out to y'all, man. I gotta say, thank you so much, man. You know what I mean? I, I just love hip hop, man, and it's I feel it's my duty to uh, go out of my way and, and and show the unsung legends, you know, some that's some mad love. I see you do that. You do you do it better than anybody I've seen it do it. To be honest with you, you know. So, I appreciate the feedback, I mean, I appreciate man. Appreciate it. But I got to ask you, man, like, taking you back to the beginning of your career, man, like, I I, I want to know, man, how did Big Sono get into the music industry, man? Like, what's the story behind that? Well, it started off with um, my Uncle Ray. He taught me how to scratch at 10 years old with a turntable and using the volume knob as the mixer to cut in and in and out. And then fast forward two years later, my mama married somebody and they lived in a different area than I was from and Battle Cat lived right around the corner and he was a teenager at the time and he would come around the corner once a week on a Saturday and he would just put a boombox out and he would play where he DJ that previous day like you know and it just amazed me and shocked me and you know we used to just have boxing gloves and box all day but if we would you know our parents allowed us to do that and all that but it was all freezes like 15 kids around the boom box listening to him mixing and it was just amazing and I was just one of them kids that went into the house and I crafted I grabbed my mama turntable my turntable, put them on an the ironing board, and just start mixing and learn how to blend. So that, and then after that, I did my first demo at Egyptian Lover's House. It's just, you know, where his parents stayed, and my great-grandmother stayed right down the street. And uh, I did my first demo with his brother David, shout out to David, Little Egypt, at like 16, 17, and so I've been blessed to be around legends in the beginning. So that's how it started, and I just took everything that I heard and what what I learned and just developed my own, you know. And also, when you brought up DJ Battlecat a few moments ago, I also read that he would that you were actually mentored by him throughout your entire career. Like, how did you initially meet Battlecat? And of course, like, what was it like to have such a legendary mentor like him? Because in my personal opinion, man, he is he is most definitely one of the most underrated uh, producers out there on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna tell you like this: he's not underrated to us out here. He is, like, there's a three-headed monster we call it out here. It's Dre, Quick, and Cat. That's the three-headed monster. But, I mean, of course, I know what you're saying. And through the world, he might be underrated. But, um, I like I said, I met him at 12 years old. At 12 years old. And I didn't see him again until I was, like, maybe... 15, 20 years later, and we were all in the studio, and Ty Dolla Sign was there, Coors was there, and Rest in Peace Chicago, and Coors actually just called me over to make beats to help on Ty Dolla Sign album, and he was like, all right, man, let's go around the corner, we're about to pick up Cat, and I was like, what? So it was amazing, then when Cat seen me, he said, I know you, I remember you. You know, see, since you was 12 years old, I remember you. I remember that face. And from that time on, he just took me under his wing. And we're talking about 2012. He just took me under his wing. And from then on, he's been an intricate part of everything that I've done since then. He's always been involved. Even if he didn't make the beat, he would do the mix. Or he'll tell me, oh, no, this, you know, fix this. Fix that, you know, so, yeah, it goes back, it goes back, so 
he is my mentor. You know, he literally is my mentor, and he's a genius. So it's like, you know, you listen to him. And also, man, I want to take you back a little bit, man. You know, I, I dug deep through your uh, musical archives, man, and I found a record that I actually enjoyed before I even got into radio and DJing. It's actually titled uh, Bullseye EP, which actually dropped in 2011, man. I was wondering, what's the story behind that phenomenal record? And, of course, where can our listeners actually snag themselves some copies today? Bullseye, I, did, I was really kind of like not suave with the business, so I put it on that pit. So you could go get it on that pit. I didn't put it on, you know, I didn't know about iTunes or none of that, but it's on that pit. But uh, that was my first mixtape, my very first one, and, and Battle Cat produced on there, and Recipe Chicasso, he mixed and mastered it. And I produced majority of the whole album. Corey did something on there. He gave me a track. But I just put together a collective of MCs that I thought that was very dope. And, you know, I always look at it like I don't want to be the only one on the song. I want, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to feel like it's a, a family. And um, it actually ended up making it to a, mo a movie called Gangs of L.A., 1991, and uh, it's basically the soundtrack to the whole movie. You can look that up. But uh, that was my first. That was my first mixtape, pretty much. And I gotta say, my favorite joint off that record is actually "Bachelor Party," man. I don't know that that song's funky to me. I like the beat. I like the lyrics. It makes you just oh. want to get up and party. Yeah, no, that, yeah. I made that beat. I made that beat, and I rapped on it, and. Um, you know, it was just, uh, you know, just, just, I, I like to talk about realism. Like, you know, I don't really talk about facts, you know, like, like, like fictional stuff. I like to talk about the real and, and that's actually something that, that, that song really came from the inspiration from the movie Bachelor Party with Tom Hanks in it. And uh, I mean, I know it might be going over the youngsters' heads with that, but go look at that movie Bachelor Party. And so, yeah, it just I just reenacted it. But, uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that's where that came from. And also, as well, in 2013, you actually dropped the God, you, yourself and the Good Story actually dropped the album God Family of Music. I was wondering, how did yourself and the Goods actually get connected? Oh, uh, you, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about Doc Free or, uh, yeah, yeah, or Mocha? Uh, you, uh, Doc, sorry. Yeah, Doc Free. Um, Doc Free just hit me up. He just hit me up on an email and just like, hey, man, you know, I see you with Cat. Like, all these people who are all around the world, France, Italy, all that, they're all inspired by Cat. That's why I was trying to tell you, like, he's not underrated. It's just, you know, he's not, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. So it's like everybody's inspired by him. So they seen that I had some music with him, and they just shot me some beats, and I did it. And he basically did the whole album, and that's when I first linked up with MoFat because he hit me up the same way. Oh man, you know, and 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 MoFat is my little bro for like ten years. So anything you hear, he's always involved in that. So that that it was as simple as an email, bro. You know what I'm saying? Simple as the email. And going and back, going back to the DJ Quick thing there for a moment. And going back to the DJ Quick thing there for a moment. The reason why I said that was because, in my personal opinion, like he, he hasn't really re received the accolades that he really deserves <laughs> pertaining to his production work. You know what I mean? Like when you hear like production work, you know, for coming from the West Coast, you always hear the big, big names. You know what I mean? Like Dr. Dre, Quick type thing. But when you hear Battle Cat, you don't really. He doesn't. He didn't really receive the accolades, in my personal opinion, that he truly deserved. Oh no, man! Man, Cat is a genius, bro. Like I, I used to be with him like every day, and I would see him make the most amazing thing in ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he's tuned into a whole nother planet. You know what I'm saying? But he would teach me, and he believed in me, and he's like, 
you dope, you got it. And he would always tell me, I want to see you get it for you. Not from me, but I will help you. But I want to see you get it from you because you're talented. So that's the thing about Cat. Like, you know, he don't really, he don't, he's not really asking for the whole world to just put him on a pedestal. You know what I mean? He's responsible for a lot of people, a lot of he, Terrence Martins and Cords and, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's a lot of people he was responsible for, but he is so humble, he just wants to share the information. And, you know, that's the best thing I can say about him. He, that's my big bro, like, you know what I'm saying? That's on, on a spiritual level and on a musical level, like, that's my big bro. And... He's a genius. Like he's brilliant. He's amazing. It's, it's it's scary what he could do in ten minutes. It's scary. You know what I'm saying? It makes you either want to make beats better or make you want to quit making beats. You know what I'm saying? And also, man, aside from the music thing here for a moment, I also noticed that in uh, 2015 you were actually featured on the cover of Shoes magazine. I was wondering. How did that come to come to be for you? And of course, like, how did you land yourself on a, on the cover of Shoes? That was somebody from the Bay. That um, I don't know how far my music reaches, and I didn't know that my music reached all over the world. But somebody from the Bay, shout out to the homie Hella Graphics, and um, he loved my music, and he's just like, hey man, they bump you out here in the Bay. And he started his, that was his first magazine, and he put me on the cover. And that's pretty much what it is. So when you see my album covers and this and this and that, he's the one that, he's the one to do it, you know? So that was, you know, it was, that, it was simple as that. Just like I tell you, this email, just, the, you know, people shot you out or whatever. It was, it was simple as that, you know? And also, in 2018, you actually had the opportunity to work with Dazzy D on the song Where I'm From off your album Leftovers 2. I was wondering, man, how did yourself and Dazzy get connected? And of course, what was it like actually working with him? Well, Dazzy reached out to me. He sent me a friend request because I guess he heard, you know, what I was doing. I was working with Battle Cat because he worked with Cat way before I did. Like, his first deal was with Cat, you know? So I guess he just felt my style, felt my flow, everything. And um, I reached out, and we have actually a few more songs, more than that. But that was just a, a beat, and I was like, Daz, I need you on this. And at the time, he was getting the studio together, so it took like two months to get that song done after I sent him a beat. But... It came out a classic, and uh, MoFat made that beat. And, uh, you know, that's, that's that's Big Bro right there. You know what I'm saying? That's Big Bro. So that's how that's how that happened. Just everything kind of happens organically, man. You know? And it's like I've been blessed for people just to reach out to me, and they all be legends. You know what I'm saying? They all be legends. So that's how that happened. But I got to say, though, man, like, I had the opportunity to chop it up with Dazzy D, man. And I got to say, Dazzy D is such a tremendous individual, man. Like, you know, he broke out on the scene, I believe it was with Ice Cube, man, back at uh, Lynch yeah, Mob yeah, Records, the list man. Mob. The list mob. Hey, look, I'm, 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 I might be blowing the spot right now, but I'm going to tell you the truth. He told me a story where... He left NWA and he was like, okay, Ice Cube was like, I got to start a new group. I got to start something and I want to get Public Enemy producers to, you know, to, to, to produce this album. And Dazzy was there and JD was there. You know, I think, J, you know, JD, you know, blesses him. I heard he's about to get out of jail soon. He's been in there for a long time. So he was there. Like, so he helped develop the lynch mob. So he's an original lynch mob member, like one of the first of two, period. So 
that itself, like like I said, I've always been connected to the legends. And, you know, he he's a he's a, he's a, he's an excellent you know, nobody could copy his style. Nobody could copy his style. So I always feel blessed when I have to, I, I get in the lab with these type of people that they respect me. And they like, you dope. You know what I'm saying? You dope. You know what I'm saying? From big to the boy to all that, like, it's just like, they like, you dope, man. So, yeah, that's how that uh, it happened organically, bro. And also, uh, this past summer, in August 2020, you actually released your newest record, Breakfast for Dinner. I was wondering, what's the story behind that record? And of course, where can we actually grab ourselves some copies today? You can get it on all platforms. Everything. Apple, you can get it from Amazon. Whatever platform is available, you can get it. But the backstory of that is that uh, I was going through a tough time. My mama died 2016, then my daddy died 2017. My little brother got killed 2018. And it was like, I, but I was like, I still gotta put something out. And so breakfast or dinner is something that my grandma used to always cook. She would cook breakfast for dinner. And it just feels like a home cooked meal and now that's why I'm doing dinner for breakfast. And then I'm going to do brunch, which was going to be a collaboration with me and Big to the Boy. So, you know, I did Leftovers 1, Leftovers 2, Leftovers 3, and then, you know, breakfast for dinner, then dinner for breakfast. So it's just, you know, I like to do things in trilogies, you know. So, uh, but... I guarantee you it's the funkiest thing. Shout out to Don Dub. He's mixing and mastering this this dinner for breakfast. Uh Big to the Boy is on there. Mo Fat is on there. Battle Cat is on there. Um Ace Man, shout out to my homie Ace Man in Austria. Uh you know is you know, is I, I try to do things as a you know, with, with a story behind it, like with a meaning, a meaning behind it. You know what I mean? And I gotta say as well, do you guys do you have any hard copies available for the old school listeners that really do still love that compact disc format? Yes, for sure. Like you know, it, it, it just just they just gotta let me know whatever they want, and I will I will send that. You know, just let me know which one it is. If it's bullseye, if it's you know, if it's God family music, if it's just, you know, whatever, yeah, I, I can definitely send that. But I got to ask you there, Sono, like, what is next for you? Is there anything I happen to miss during this broadcast? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote what we still have you here live on the Canadian airwaves? Um, the dinner for breakfast, the dinner for breakfast is going to be amazing. Like, I'm making this album like it's my last album. So it's super, super dope. Mo Fat, my, my little bro, uh, I got Cat on there. I got Box. You know, you you guys know who Box is. That's one of my MC mentors as well. Um, you know, India. Shout out to India. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's bulky is on there. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very bound up. It's mixing and mastering the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is do it in two. So I'm going to do dinner for breakfast and then brunch. So it's going to be spaced out like three months, four months from each other with seven songs each one. And uh, But as far as production, you know, I've, I've, I've sent some stuff to Razzcast. You know, I sent some stuff to J-Ro from Alcoholics. I've, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've been, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? I can't really say what's going to be chosen or whatever, but I just know that people were messing with me like that. You know what I mean? They they, they get my scrub from, um, uh, he's part of the Howard Glyphics, you know, he picked something and... And uh, shout out to Unique from Detroit. I did a, 
song for Dank, for Frankie Dank. You know, that's Jay Dillon's people. That's his best friends. So I got, I a, I got a song actually out with Dank, with a beat I did, and Frank, a song I did, and it's on Unique album, and uh, and that's with, with Capadonna and Scrub. Like, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Everything comes up every day, something different that I forget that I do, but, you know, for the most part, that's, you know, I, I, every day I work, bro. Every day I work. And a shout out to Lil Sobe, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm working with him, just went to his video shoot yesterday, and I did his last, you know what I'm saying, did a couple tracks on his last album, and so I, I just stay busy. I don't even think about what I'm doing. I just stay busy, you know? And also, Sono, so this is the time of the interview quickly right before I wrap things up that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves, just a chance to give some shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, and also, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated everything Big Sono if they're not already doing so. Yeah, well, it's Big Sono on Instagram, Big Sono on Twitter, Sono Parker on Facebook. Um, Shout-out to... My real ones, Don Dub, Big to the Boy, um, you know, Lil Sodi, uh, Unique, shout out to Yada, shout out to my wifey, most importantly, because that's, that's the one who really holds me down, Leilani, um, Battle Cat, of course, you know, Course, April Fools. I ain't even got to say everybody name in that April Fools. Rest in peace, Chicago. Um, you know, I don't want to miss nobody, but yeah, it's, 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 it's like that, you know. And I got to say, Sono, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy evening and coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM. Outlaw Radio FM. It was an honor, man, and most definitely a privilege. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. And, and again, salute to you what you're doing because you're doing something I've never seen being done. I, like, I've I never seen a special ed interview. <laughs> like, I've never seen it. And you did that, you know what I mean? So it's like you doing something that other people can't do. And I, I, I salute you, and I salute your wife, you know what I mean? Because I know she's, you know what I mean, she, she holds you down. Just like mine does, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna shoot you this album as soon as it's done. I promise you. Hey man, you sounds like before, a plan. You gonna get it before iTunes get it. I promise you. Hey, most definitely. If you send it, I'll spin it right here in Canada, man. And I do got to give a shout out to my wife as well because if it wasn't for her, my head would probably blow up. And you know what I mean. But she most definitely holds me down. Hey, you, you, you hey, look, man. That's when you made it. That's when you made it, when you got your wifey. That's when you made it, you know what I mean? And that's my wifey. Like, she, she, she's the backbone, you know what I mean? We can't do this on our own, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, I appreciate y'all, though, man. I really do, you know what I mean? The fact that y'all spin my records and you look out for me. And, and shout out to Tony Grants. I can't forget him. I know you know who he is. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, work, I'm working with him. I'm working with him. Yeah, I've been on him for 20 years, so it's like I, I got some stuff for him, and he's an amazing MC. So, yeah, there's a lot of shit going on, bro, bro. But you hear it from me. You know what I mean? I'm going to shoot everything to you directly. Hey, man, most definitely. Like I said a few moments ago, man, if you send it, I'm most definitely going to spin it. I appreciate you, Zono. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Hey man, you most definitely have yourself a wonderful night on the West Coast, man, and you know, ho- hope you hope you and yours stay safe, man, during during this terrible pandemic. I yes, yes, and I, I hope you do too. I hope you do too. I know it's cold out there. Oh man, she is a tip at Nipley down here in Canada, man. But you know, li- li- living here, my, living my, here my whole life, man, I tend to just get a little used to it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, y'all stay safe, man, and keep doing what you're doing, man. Whatever you're doing is working. Just keep doing what you're doing. Hey, man, I appreciate the love, man. I really do. Thank you so much, Sono. All 
ay bobo. 